for uh, setting up this event. Uh, uh, I just recently uh, was introduced to Sophia via our headliner, Justin. Um, we became friends on Facebook before we actually met, and uh, she posted something on her, on her, on her page saying you know, her husband was really sick and she needed someone to come over right away to plow her, and I just booked it. <laughs> and by the time I got there, I didn't realize that there was another word there, and that last word was driveway. So, ended up shoveling the driveway, and, uh, you know, joke's on you, you paid me money and all the snow's gone now anyway, so whatever, you're lost, I mean. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been kind of freaking out about this, like, all week, because it's the first time I've ever tried to do stand-up and uh, wrote stuff down and it was fuck that and it's horrible. So I'm just gonna throw that all out and for the next, how long do I have? Five, 10 minutes, five yeah. and a half, whatever. <laughs> yeah. it, it just, you're just gonna hear some, you know, verbal diarrhea for the next few minutes. Um, I do like jokes. I don't, I'm not good at making up my own jokes, but uh, uh, I did hear this one recently. What's, uh, what's the difference between uh, Sullivan Square and a lobster with boob job? Well, one's a crusty bus station, the other's a busty crustacean. So, you know, little things like that. You know, there's little, little puns. You know, I've always been a big fan of puns. Uh, in fact, there, um, you know, the Boston Globe was having this joke contest uh, a little while ago. And uh, you know, send in send in these emails with uh, you know with your favorite jokes, and the best ones get published. So you know, I thought maybe if I send in like ten different puns from ten different email accounts, I could I could maybe win the contest. But unfortunately, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> you guys like knock knock jokes? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm gonna tell you the world's best knock knock joke. Uh, you start. Knock, knock. Who's that? <laughs> There we go. Thank you very much. Um, hey, you just missed the busty crustacean joke, which I stole from you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whatever. But thank you very much for the material. I am desperately in need of it. Um, went to a, a very uh, religious college. Um, weren't allowed to drink. Weren't allowed to smoke. Weren't allowed to have sex. So of course that's where I lost my virginity. Uh, you know, it was it was kind of. One of those awkward, like, I don't know what's going on here. It sort of, the buildup was really, you know, we, we, we were dating for a while, we broke up, we got back together, broke up, and uh, this was like spring formal, and there was like nobody on campus, which, uh, and I didn't want to go, so I'm like, no, I'm just going to sit in my room. And Tracy ended up not going either, so she just kind of called up me up and like, hey, you want to hang out? Okay, maybe we could hang out. And so we're hanging out, and we're exes at this point. But then uh, something, something starts to happen, and um, for some reason our college doesn't have any locks on the doors. Um, and so as things get started, and I'm like, okay, I think this goes here, and there was a. We were frozen in fear. Door opens. Lights are out, thank God, because you know, no one wants to look at me during this during sex. But uh, door opens, Travis pokes in his head, looks around, goes straight for the refrigerator, grabs a root beer, walks out. Okay. Can we keep going? Oh, we should keep going. Oh, yeah, horrible mess, whatever, awkward. Yeah. <laughs> the very next day, Travis comes up to me and says, uh, Evan, where were you last night? I stopped by your room, but you weren't fucking there. It's actual words. It's not a joke. That's a true story. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was a very interesting college. You know, we, no, there wasn't aside aside from me losing my virginity, there wasn't really any sex going on. There wasn't any, you know, premar premarital anything. Uh, very low pregnancy rate, but a very high rate of uh, stair accidents. So, <laughs> um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> and um, to finish off. My little bit here. Uh, I just want to tell you guys a little story about uh, a couple of horses. Um, you know, black horse and a white horse, owned by Farmer Brown and Farmer Gray. Because why not? 
And so anyway, they shared, they shared a field together and they decided that one day they were bored doing their horse stuff and uh, they decided to have a race. So they run around the field once and you know the black horse won by a long shot. The white horse is like, damn, he won. What, what's your secret? It's like, well, I do these horse exercises where I like stretch my legs and all this stuff and I lift things with my legs. Like, all right, well, I'll try those horse exercises. So he does those horse exercises for a week. He's like, hey, I challenge you to a rematch. All right, you're on. So they run around and the black horse wins again. This time by not as much, but he still kicks the crap out of the white horse. And white horse is like, ah, oh, damn. Well, what else is your secret? Well, you know, my farmer gives me these really high quality oats. So maybe if you eat some of those oats, you might be good too. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go eat some of those oats. So he eats the oats, eats the oats, and they race again. Oh, Black Horse wins just by a nose this time. He's like, oh man, what do you keep doing? You keep beating me. And he's like, well, I also got to put myself into the moment. I'm like, all right, I got to be fast, like the wind. Like the wind, just got just to gotta think of yourself like the wind. He's like, okay, okay, I've got this. I'm going to be like the wind. So he's like, I'm like the wind, I'm like the wind, I'm like the wind, I'm like the wind, I'm like the wind. And just as they're about to start the race, he notices there's a little dog sitting off in the corner. And uh, he's like way up on a hill. And he's like, okay, that's weird. So anyway, they run, they're running the race. And they go. And for somehow, even with all of his training, even with his oats, even while he's thinking like the wind, the black horse finishes before the white horse even starts. And he's like, oh my god, what the hell? And then the dog walks up to the fence and says, just kind of, no, no, just his head, head tilted. Get over here. <laughs> so the white horse goes over and uh, you know, the dog puts his paws up and says, I think I know what your problem is. The white horse says, Holy fuck, you can talk! 